Hello everyone, welcome to another video and this is part 6 of Linux for DevOps crash course. So let's begin. So today I want to talk about the logging mechanism on a Linux system, how it works and how we can manage the logs which are generated on our Linux systems. So let's begin. So as you can see in the first slide, uh, the processes and operating system kernel should be able to record log of events useful for auditing the system and troubleshooting problems. It simply means that whatever activity or events that are happening on our Linux systems, it is pretty important for us to be able to record those uh, events and activities for later use, for example, for uh, compliance, for auditing or for troubleshooting any errors. So logs are one of the most important things that you should be able to uh, record and you should be able to persist them on, all, on your Linux systems. Okay. So there's a particular directory slash where slash log, which generally stores all the logs permanently. Okay. So in Red Hat systems or, or in Red Hat Enterprise Linux systems, log messages are based on a protocol called syslog and these, uh, these log messages are handled by two services systemd generaldy and rsyslog okay let's read about systemd generaldy so systemd generaldy daemon is responsible for collecting the logs from the kernel the boot process from standard output and error of daemons as they start up and run okay then the logs are forwarded by systemd generaldy to another uh, process or an, an, another service uh, which is called which is called rsyslog for further processing and rsyslog is, is responsible for storing your log messages persistently in slash where slash log directory okay so this is like the default behavior of logging on a red hat linux system now let's learn about some important log files that you will see so these are the uh, the default files that we generally see on a red hat system so when you install and configure or create a new vm virtual machine uh, you will see all these files uh, there by default so the first one is slash where slash log slash messages so most syslog messages are logged here the exceptions are messages related to authentication, email processing and uh, periodically run jobs. Okay. So uh, apart from the log messages related to authentication, email processing and uh, periodically run jobs, which generally means the cron jobs, all the other messages or the logs are being uh, recorded in this in this file slash where slash log slash messages so it, it's a file okay this this messages is a file which is able to store all these logs then you have slash where slash log slash secure uh, so that is used for security and authentication uh, that is used for security and authentication related messages and errors so when you log into the system and uh, uh, and whatever logs are being generated, uh, all all those logs are stored under uh, slash where slash log secure file by default. Okay, I'm going to show you an example also how the logs are generated uh, in this file. Then slash where slash log slash mail log for anything related to mails. I mean, if 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 you have configured your server to uh, to uh, serve the mails, uh, you know, I mean. Uh, there are uh, various services like postfix uh, or you can use uh, i mean which can be used like an uh, smtp relay so all those logs are by default stored in slash where slash log slash mail log file okay then you have the, the periodically executed tasks or your crone jobs for that you have another file slash where slash log slash crone so as i've uh, already mentioned that uh, we're going to see crone in a separate video in much more detail and we're going to talk about it a lot okay then slash where slash log slash boot dot log uh, message related to system startup so all all the events that are uh, happening as a uh, uh, as part of your boot process all those log entries are recorded in this file okay uh, 
okay so uh, let's see some examples in real time on, on a terminal now <clears throat> so here i'm using the uh Reddit enterprise linux version 9 system okay and i'm logged in as ec2 hyphen user right now let me become root just to keep things simple all right and i'm going to show you uh the uh, where log messages file first so i'm going to navigate to slash where slash log directory and here if i just list out the files and directories i can see these many files and at the last at the bottom of the screen you will see a file called messages so this is the same file which is mentioned in this ppt Okay, so if I just try to cat the contents of this file, you can see so many logs are appearing here. So I mean, most of the logs you will see here, apart from the ones which are uh, uh, exceptions like authentication or email processing or cron jobs. So all the other logs are generated here. Okay. Uh, also. If you want to follow or if you want to see live logs, you can use the command called tail. Remember this, I think I have already spoken about it in my previous sessions. So tail hyphen F is to follow live logs. So for example, I want to follow the logs which are being recorded in this messages file. So I can use tail space hyphen F space messages. Okay, so I can see all the, all the live logs happening on the on, on my machine if you see. I don't get my, I mean, I, I did not get my prompt back, which means uh, it is still uh, trying to see the live logs or the latest logs being generated on our Linux system. Okay. <clears throat> the next is where log secure. So again, if I do ls space hyphen ltra, I can see all the different files and you can see a file called secure. Here. So a secure is to store all your authentication logs. For example, when you SSH to a Linux system, so the log entry which is generated is stored in secure file. So if I do cat secure, you can see all the uh, log files or the logs which are generated for your uh, system related to authentication. Okay. Now uh let's do a live test so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open another terminal of the same vm okay so i'm going to open an, an, another terminal of this vm and i'm going to follow along to see if i'm able to see the new logs in our secure file for authentication okay so let's go to my aws management console click on the instance id click on connect and copy this example command and try to log in here so see i'm able to log in now so i just opened another session on the same linux vm which i'm using in this first tab and you can see a new entry being added here accepted public key for ec2 hyphen user from this ip on port 29331 okay and and some additional details as well and uh, it says this ip right so how to verify that if i go here and if i just type what is my ip and i can see my ip right now so this is my laptop's ip it is 106-219-120-249 if i go back to the logs you can see it's the same ip which means i just i just attached to this machine in another terminal okay from this ip and as ec2 hyphen user so all the log entries as i mentioned will be recorded in this secure file okay if you fail the authentication as well and if you see any error message related to password or uh, a public key or anything related to SSH, 
all those entries will also be recorded here so you can see the error messages also okay in case your login fails okay so just an example i wanted to give all right so next is scenario okay so suppose you are given a task of configuring a syslog server which could store logs from various remote devices like network devices email servers or a web service etc so this is one of the scenarios that i faced when i was working as a linux administrator in my previous organization i was given a task of setting up a server a syslog server which which basically means a centralized server to store all the logs from all the other devices in the infrastructure okay so at that time uh, i created this new syslog server and then I configured it to uh, store logs from all the other devices. Okay, so this is the, the same scenario and I'm going to just show you how you can configure a server to be a syslog server or a centralized server to store all the logs from various devices and how you can configure the client servers or the servers which have to forward their logs to this syslog server okay so i mean we will see both the configurations the server configuration and the client configuration okay so uh, just as an example suppose you are given access to two servers one server and one client and you have to configure server one as as a syslog server and server two as a client forwarding all its logs to the new syslog server okay so we'll see how we can actually uh, accomplish this so what I'm going to do is, so I have two machines right now, if you see, let me bring it here. So I am I have two uh, machines, the one that I've been using, the main uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 9 machine and then another uh, Red Hat machine with another IP. So if you see on the console also, I have two uh, VMs running right now, okay. so this rail line will be our syslog server and rail line underscore 2 will be our client server which means rail line underscore 2 will be forwarding all its logs to this server and and then this rail line machine will, uh, will be accepting the logs from rail line underscore 2 okay so how we can uh, accomplish that i've given step by step instructions with all the commands so that you can also follow along all right so so on 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 your main syslog server which is this server okay let's go back to our root uh, this uh, home directory of root user and also i'm going to be using root access here because i mean most of the commands to configure this server to be a syslog server requires root access so i'll be uh, working with root user okay so i've already become root and I'm going to create one directory. So I'll do mkdir hyphen p. Okay, so I'm just trying to create another directory so that I can store all the logs in this directory. Okay, so under slash where slash log, I'm going to get another directory called syslog. All right, then uh, what I'm uh, trying to do here is so there's a, a service which manages our syslog configuration which is called our syslog okay so name of the service or the daemon is our syslog so and uh, this is the main configuration file which you can edit or modify as per your convenience okay as per your requirement so i'm going to do the same so i'm going to open this configuration file of our syslog okay and uh, this uh, rsys log is installed uh, by default when you create any new uh, Red Hat server on AWS. Okay, so you will get this service installed by default. So vim uh, slash etc slash rsys log dot conf. Okay, so this is the main configuration file of rsys log service, which is used to configure syslog server. Okay. So there are n number of options in this depending on the requirement what you want to achieve okay but we are going to take 
I'll just just uh, I'm keep things simple here and see how we can configure this server to accept logs from remote servers right so what we have to do is the first thing that we have to do is we have to enable the type of logs that we want to uh, configure okay so for example we have two options in general either we can forward uh, using tcp protocol or we can use udp you can see there are two sections here and both are commented right now okay so i mean you can uh, either configure udp logs or or i mean using udp protocol so all the logs will be uh, coming to this server using udp protocol or you can use tcp protocol okay but in this example i'm going to use tcp so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uncomment these two lines here okay so delete and delete okay so what i did i enabled a tcp protocol to be used for log forwarding from the remote machines okay and also if you see i enabled a port port 514 so just remember for syslog configuration the default port is 514 okay which is given in this configuration file also then uh, the next thing is is i'm going to use a template now uh, uh, what is a template the template is the exact configuration of the directories or the log file names that you want to choose for the device which will be forwarding its logs for example i'm using a template like this here okay so don't worry too much about it you you don't need to remember this this uh, template uh, you know uh, by heart so it depends on the requirement but i just uh, 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 mentioned this this template which i used at that time when i got this task okay but there are n number of templates available on google if you search you can get all all of these various templates okay so this is just a template which is named as netdev so i'm naming this template as netdev and i mean what it's going to do is any remote server which which wants to forward its logs to this syslog server is going to create a directory with the host name of that remote machine under where log syslog okay and under that then there will be some log files which, which will be generated and those log files will have date year the date and the date day dot log so so this will be the the name or the uh, the naming format of any new files which will be created on this server okay for any any remote server which is forwarding its logs to this server okay i mean we'll see it in action okay so the meaning of this this template then what i'm going to i mean uh, then in the next line what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to specify or i'm trying to create a configuration for the remote host ip okay so i'm saying if the host ip starts with this or it is equal to this it starts with i mean you can use like a a wildcard also for example you can just mention 172.31 dot only which means that any ip address i mean any any remote server with ip address 172.31 and if it wants to forward its logs to this server then this template will be used then use netdev which means the remote uh, server will be creating uh, i mean uh, this syslog server is going to create a new directory under where log syslog with the host name of the remote server which is trying to forward its logs to this server and then the log files will be generated in this format okay date year date and date date dot log this will be the name of the file the meaning of this okay so it's pretty simple and end stop which means just do this and then stop and don't do anything else the meaning of these two lines okay so uh so i just want to repeat myself once more so i'm trying to use tcp protocol to uh, enable syslog uh syslog configuration on this server okay so 
the remote machines are going to use TCP port 514 to forward its logs to this server and I'm going to use this, this a template named NetDev okay which which basically means network devices okay and uh, all the logs are going to be logged under where logs is log so under this there will be a, a new directory uh, which will be the host name of the remote machine and then under that this is the uh, the format of the log file which will be generated inside this uh, uh, this directory which, which which will be the name of the remote servers uh, uh, this uh, host name okay then i'm trying to specify a particular ip address so if this ip address is trying to send its logs then we should implement this a, a net dev a, a template and then stop okay and then after after this I'm, I'm going to save this file and then i'm going to restart the rsys log service okay and then to see if it worked or not i can use this tail hyphen f command to see the live logs okay uh, we'll see it in, in action okay so on my terminal i've opened this file and i've enabled tcp port 514 then And also, I've also shared one screenshot of the uh, this final configuration file. So I'm going to uh, I'm give you this in the description of the video. Okay. So you just have to copy and paste. This. Uh, these lines from here so i'll just do copy and paste copy and insert paste okay so i'm i'm, I'm using this ip but make sure you change this ip to the one which you are using okay so the client machine so it, it should be the ip address of the client machine okay which is 172.31.26.63 in my case but of course it will be different in your case okay so i'm going to quit and save colon x enter all right and i'm not going to restart the service right now because i still have to configure the client okay so I'm, i'll go to client now okay and this is my client machine so once again i'll become root for the sake of simplicity and i'm going to open this same file this is the uh, rsyslog.com file so vim slash etc slash rsyslog.com and this is the client machine so on client machine we just have to enter this line so you can edit anywhere so let's edit here the meaning of this line is star dot star means everything means all the logs and the meaning of double at the rate is tcp so, so when you are using tcp protocol you have to mention double at the rate symbol and then where do you want to forward all the logs using tcp to this machine and this is the ip address of the this log survey as you can see in my case it is 172.31.20.56 but in your case it will be different so just ensure that you use the right ip addresses for it to work okay and then i'm using port 514 okay so i'm going to quit and save and now i'm going to restart the service the rsys log service to apply the changes so whenever you make any changes to configuration files of any daemon or service you have to restart the service to apply the change always remember this so i'll do systemctl restart our syslog this is the name of the service done and then here also i'm going to restart so i'll do systemctl restart our syslog done next uh, let's go back to server configuration and now i can use this command to follow the logs okay so 
but before that uh, let's try to create some logs so you can create your own logs by using this utility called logger utility which is used to generate some test logs like this okay so so on, on the client machine you can use a logger space then send a test message okay now now on on the on the syslog server uh, let's see if a new directory with the name of the host name of the client machine is created or not so i'm going to navigate to where log syslog and let's do ls and we can see one new directory being created with the host name of the client machine which is 172.31.26.63 in my case and if i go inside this directory and do ls i can see one file or two files basically because i tried this configuration uh, yesterday as well so you can see the files are being created in the same format as i gave in the template inside the, the configuration file if you remember this so this template is to specify the format of the file the naming format of the file which is going to be created okay as you can see host name then year uh, month and date dot log okay so, so so let's try to follow this now and see if we're able to see live logs so i'm going to use may 23 okay which is the latest file tail hyphen f all right now if i try to send another message for example logger testing and if i go back you can see the logs are generated another try you can do testing two three four five six okay on the on the client machine enter and once again on the syslog server you can see the logs are being generated to this so so this is the way to configure the uh, syslog server and client to receive logs on a syslog server from a client machine or from a remote machine okay so i i configured uh, this vm to be the main syslog server which will be storing the logs and i configured the client uh, vm to uh, to uh, forward its logs to the syslog server okay so all the logs are being forwarded now and type anything any random text enter and you can see the log entry being made to the syslog server okay now uh, just one more thing just remember that you have to open inbound port tcp514 on security group in aws okay the meaning of this is since we are using port 514 here for a communication okay so you have to enable this port on the security group in aws okay which i already made beforehand but let me show it to you so if i click on this main syslog server you can go to security to check the security group and open this security group in new tab We're going to come to this security group configuration and how it works when we when we uh, start the AWS series, okay, AWS learning series. Uh, so, but uh, but for now, just remember that whatever ports you are trying to use, you have to open all the ports in the, in security groups in AWS. Else, it will not work. So you can see I've opened port uh, this this five one four from source. Okay, so what you, what you can do is you just have to open the port like this so just use this this custom tcp and type and enter 514 and then enter 0.0.0 slash .0, 0 which basically means from anywhere okay so i opened this port already on the security group and and that is why this is working okay and also so this is my main server and if i use if i check the other server the client server Okay, so I, I'm, I'm using the, the same security group for both the uh, servers to make things uh, absolute 
relatively simple so okay so you can use the same i mean so you can just create one security group or, or you can use an existing security group which is attached to the syslog server just just allow this port 514 on the inbound and then just attach this same security group to your other instance also other server also the client server okay and then it's, it's going to work okay so uh, this is going to ensure that the things are pretty simple right now because we are not focusing on aws we are focusing on the syslog server configuration okay so so uh, that's all about it uh, i hope you liked my video okay i'm going to come up with some more videos related to uh, the uh, the logs and how you can troubleshoot uh, an issue using the logs in our uh, later videos okay but that's all for now and uh, whatever ppt and uh, screenshots or the uh, uh, images I'm, I'm i'm showing in this video i'm going to share the link to all all these in the description of the video okay all right then uh, if you like my video please hit that like button and uh, share this video with your friends and, co uh, and colleagues and uh, please subscribe to my channel okay so i'm going to end the video now and i'm going to see you in the next one